Hi, in this video I am going to show you the working of dynamic source routing. Dynamic source routing is used in mobile ad hoc network and this falls under reactive routing protocol. The meaning of reactive routing protocol, if a node wants to send any data to another node, at that time they will go for route searching. They will not maintain any information uh, for future usage. Uh, at that time it's needed they will go for route searching so we are considering this uh, network in this network node s representing source node node b is representing destination node and these other node will work as an intermediate node so our objective is that node s wants to send data to node d so initially s is not having any information for d where this node is existing in network so the first phase it will go through is route discovery it will search it will discover a route to reach node d and when it's discovering this route at the time it's needed so that's why this the protocol also known as route reactive routing protocol so s is already connected to a b and c so what s will do s will ask its neighbors about node D. So for this purpose, as will create a packet, that packet known as route request packet. The content of these packet are unique ID. A ID will be given to this packet. So this ID is helpful to avoid duplicate packet reception. If a node is receiving multiple copies of same packet, they can discard it. <coughs> Another uh, second field is a list of node. This list of node contains intermediate node information. Uh, the node packet has gone through. Third one, the address of source address and the address of destination address. And there are some more fields, but these four are important. So node S will create a route request packet. So first field is the ID, the side is 2, second field is empty, initially it's empty, third is the address of source and fourth is the address of destination. So now S will broadcast this packet. So this packet will be uh, received by A, B and C. Uh, so these nodes also don't know anything about D. So first we will consider for node C. <coughs> What node C will do, node C will mention its own address in second field and C will broadcast this packet again. So that packet is received by S, B and G. Now S, packet S would find out that I have sent a route request with ID 2 and I have already broadcasted it. So S will drop this packet. Here B has received multiple copy for the same request. So that's why node B also discard the packet received later. Now node A uh, will check will do the same thing. Node A broadcast this packet, but before broadcasting this packet, A will write its own address here. And after writing this address, <coughs> A will discard. Uh, sorry, A will broadcast this packet to node S. Now again, S again receiving the same request. It has already broadcast broadcasted. So S will drop this packet. Now B will broadcast the packet. B packet will be received by J, F, S, and C. Node S and C will drop these packet because they have already broadcast it and here this unique ID used. They check the unique ID and they also save this unique ID in their uh, buffer. Uh, so now we are considering for node B, so node G. G will mention its address in packet here if you can see and this packet will be sent this packet will be sent to all its neighbors 
so if a neighbor has already the copy of this packet all if the neighbor has already broadcasted that packet in past they will drop this packet except those nodes other node will keep these packets now i and h also will repeat the same process i will mention its own address here and broadcast this packet to its neighbor so i is having only one neighbor g g already broadcasted that packet so g will drop this packet h will broadcast this packet to g and f they already sent or received the same copy they also drop the packet now node G, node f will broadcast the packet by mentioning its own address in the second field so b g h they will broadcast and other node will keep the packet these two nodes these two nodes when these two nodes will broadcast the packet so those packet will be received by b f so they will drop the packet so node d when receive this packet node d would find out there is a node s that is trying to search a route to reach me so now node d will reply to source s now the problem is that how node d would know what is the way to reach s so here comes the role of second field intermediate node so from here D would deduce that this packet is actually coming from S to B, B to F, F to D. So D will use the same path in reverse manner and it will prepare a reply packet. So that packet is known as RREP. This packet contains route record. So D will prepare the route reply packet and send it to F because uh, D knows that in order to reach S, I have to send a packet to F. F will send this packet to B and B will send this packet to S. So now S is having a route to reach D. So whatever data now S wants to send, S will include this path in the header of those data and then send the data. So for example, this is a data and the route is included in the header of data. The route is included in the data means before sending data route is fixed so that's why this is also known as source routing so this packet will follow the same route s to b b to f and f to d so objective completed data delivered to node d now one question is that uh, s has delivered its packet to node d after few seconds, S wants to send some more data to node D. So if S will start route discovery process again, it will consume same time again and not efficient as well. So one solution is that if node S will store the route for some time, so that route can be used in future. So this feature also known as route caching. So route will be stored so next time whenever s wants to send some data to node d this route can be used now there is a problem if s will save a route and just consider if a after saving if a link is broken so that route become invalid so how that node would know that uh, the route it cached it invalid for example, S has saved the route S to B to F to D and after some time F and D link broken and D move out to another network. So for that purpose, a mechanism that will do this part is known as route maintenance. So whenever any link broken, that information will be broadcasted in the network so that any node that has cached a route that can uh, include the broken link node they will update their route and that name of packet is R E double R route error packet. So when F will find out a link is broken, F will broadcast this information. So we are considering only the 
path going to S. Actually, this F will broadcast this information. So B will broadcast, and whenever S will receive this information, S will find out link F and D got broken. S will remove this path from this cache memory. Thank you for watching.